Hillary Clinton can never claim to be a friend of the gay community as long as she continues to support immigration policies that bring Islamic extremists to our country and who suppress women, gays, and anyone else who doesn't share their views or values. Ask yourself, who is really the friend of women and the LB and LGBT community? Donald Trump with actions or Hillary Clinton with her words? And that was Donald Trump earlier today taking on Hillary Clinton. He says her immigration policies make her no friend to the LGBT community. So as we continue to learn more about the deadly attack in Orlando, they killed 49 people. Did Trump make a valid point about Hillary Clinton? Remember, you can join us on the conversation. Give us a call now at 187 Newsmax. Again, that number is 1 877 639 7629. We'd love to hear from you. For right now, we are pleased to be joined via Skype from Connecticut by the former Lieutenant Governor of New York, Betsy McCoy. Also joining us via Skype, the National President of Log Cabin Republicans. Gregory T. Angelo. Thank you both for joining us here on Newsmax Prime. Pleasure to have you. Thanks for having me. I wish it was different circumstances. I do too. I do too. Gregory, let's start with you. Mr. Trump went on to say that Hillary wants to bring in extremists who suppress women, gays, and anyone who doesn't share our values. What is your take on Trump's speech today? Does Clinton's immigration policy hurt the LGBT community? Well, number one, and let's let's just start here. Number one, I want to start the segment by letting um, the people of Orlando know that log cabin Republicans members around the country are sharing in sadness, sorrow, and mourning for those horrendous terror that horrendous terrorist attack that took place yesterday. But let's not forget the victims here, as you mentioned, forty nine people dead. Of course, first and foremost. In terms of in, yeah, in terms of uh, Mr. Trump's remarks today, it was historic. This was a historic speech. Never before in history has the presumptive presidential nominee of the Republican Party explicitly reached out to and referenced the LGBT community. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Trump did that in his remarks today. Even more to the point, and to answer your question about Hillary Clinton, what Mr. Trump did in his speech was highlight the fact that national security issues are LGBT issues. We've been focused so long, and I think right, rightly so in this country, on things like marriage equality and employment protections, etc. But people were targeted for death execution, literal execution, just because of their sexual orientation. And what Mr. Trump is saying, that we need to get serious as a country about radical Islamic terrorism, a phrase Hillary Clinton doesn't, can't even bring herself to mention. Ah, but she and, is now. She is now. <laughs> she did exactly. pivot a little now. bit. That, that, that's right. She, she's getting there. But, um, uh, but there is a crisis in this country on a well, of radical Islamic terrorists or people who could be radicalized who would and could target the LGBT community for death if just given the chance. Betsy, your take. I Does agree. I agree with what Gregory T. Angelo said, and I'd like to underscore the fact that any nation that believes in diversity and equality, as we always have, cannot admit these Muslims to our country because they don't believe in diversity. They are committed to exterminating people who disagree with them, women, gays, and other people, even just Christians. They're beheading them. They're burning them in cages. They're drowning them in cages. We cannot allow people who subscribe to this faith to come into this country. Are you saying all Muslims? I just want to clarify. I believe that Donald Trump is right to say we should have a temporary suspension, a temporary suspension of immigration from Muslim-dominated countries until we know who's coming in and what beliefs they adhere to. Uh, let's hear what Steve from Florence, Kentucky has to say. He joins us now via phone. Steve, thanks for joining us here on Newsmax Prime. What do you think about Trump doubling down on his idea of a temporary ban of Muslims entering the United States? I think he's right on it. I think that uh, uh, there should be some kind of regulation before Muslims enter the United States of America because uh, uh, they, they, if you read the uh, Islamic, uh, the Quran, if you read it, it, it'll tell you in there that they believe in one religion. If nobody else believes in what they believe in, then uh, they either kill you or do away with you in some way. Um, I, I, I guess I'm a first-time voter this year. I'll be voting for Mr. Trump, 
because uh, I haven't seen anything in the last few presidents. And especially, uh, I hope Hillary don't, does not get it, because i tell you what, we're going to see four more years of Obama. Um, and I don't want to see people's guns taken away, because it's their right. It's right. the Second Amendment. That's their right to have those guns. And she has been bringing Protected. up gun control once again. Steve from Florence, Kentucky, thanks so much for joining us. I want to go back to uh, Gregory and, you know, talking about this ban. And actually, you mentioned radical Islam. Uh, as you know, President Obama has not called it that. Uh, he's tried to say that we are not waging a war against religion. Uh, there is concern about having one billion Muslims against the United States. However, we are hearing Hillary Clinton for the first time actually call it that or something sort of like radical Islam. Is this her way of kind of pivoting more to the general election? What do you think? I suppose, but this is once again Hillary Clinton leading from behind. She led from behind on LGBT issues, only became a supporter of marriage equality personally in 2013, and then didn't recognize the constitutional right to marriage equality until shortly before the Supreme Court heard the Obergefell case just last year. And here we are on, on the instances of, of radical Islamic terrorism. We have had new, several instances of radical Islamic terrorism here on, in the United States, on American soil, and only now is Hillary Clinton referencing this, that there is a, 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 a portion of people who are adherents to the Islamic faith, mm -hmm. who have been radicalized, and, and who are targeting women, gays, and religious minorities for violence, not just around the world, but here in the United States. I want to go now to Gerald, who's calling in from Arizona. Gerald, what's your uh, question or comment for our panel? Uh, well, I, I, I believe the they stop the immigration completely for now. And I would appreciate it if somebody would talk about why the mosque and the members of the mosque don't cooperate with law enforcement. Mm -hmm. We have yet had mm -hmm. one terrorist or radical Islam person turned in to the authorities. And uh, I don't think it'll ever happen. Uh, Gerald, you bring up a very valid point. A lot of people are asking themselves why members of these mosques don't come forward and say something. In fact, there were reports coming out that the mosque that this shooter attended in Fort Pierce, Florida. In fact, uh, the imam there said that he was concerned about this particular uh, this particular man, that he found him to be somewhat disturbing. I'm, I'm paraphrasing here, but Betsy, uh, your take to what Gerald said, should we be doing more monitoring of these mosques? Should they participate Absolutely. more? These, these mosques are in many cases, not all cases, but in many cases, these are the places where people are radicalized. And I'd like to add one other thing, and that is about guns. If more people were carrying guns, these, these mass murders would not occur because after the gunman pulls out his gun and starts shooting somebody in the crowd would shoot back and I would urge members of the LGBT community who are going to bars and other places where they may be targeted to get a gun permit get a gun and defend themselves. Greg, uh, Gregory do you think that's the solution there? Uh, we're certainly strong supporters of the Second Amendment here at Log Cabin Republicans. I mean I would you know hesitate a little and say you know, I wouldn't necessarily advocate, you know, people bring guns to a bar if you're going to, you know, be having a couple of drinks, I mean, unless you're a, maybe a designated driver. Um, but, you know, but right now... A designated uh, you know, shooter, Gregory. A designated shooter. <laughs> <laughs> very clever. But also, like, you know, I mean, that, that is that could very well be the reality here. Um, and I would just add one thing. I, I do want to um, make sure this is clear. Log Cabin Republicans does not support an outright ban on Muslims coming into this country. If you're going to reference uh, radical Islamic extremism, you're talking about a fringe sect of people who practice the Muslim faith. Mm -hmm. I know many Muslims here in Washington, D.C. and around the country who are good, God-fearing people uh, who just want to live their lives in quiet dignity and are extremely hesitant about their entire faith uh, um, being portrayed in a singular light. We're talking about radical Islamic extremism, not all of Islam. We Gregory T. Angelo, Betsy Some McCoy, suspension. we're running out of time. Sorry to interrupt, but we are running out of time. A great conversation. Again, sorry that it's under these circumstances, but thank you both for joining us here on Newsmax Prime. And thank you at home for joining us tonight. Remember to call in tomorrow at 187 Newsmax. See you then. Have a great evening.